Hi, this is Matthew Cratter from Trade University, and today I want to talk about Bitcoin versus Bitcoin Cash, as well as to a lesser extent, a fork of Bitcoin Cash, which is called Bitcoin Satoshi's Vision or BSV. If you're interested in learning how to make money in both bull and bear markets and stocks and momentum stocks, as well as in cryptocurrencies, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Now, I don't want you guys uh, be getting a lot of questions about Bitcoin Cash, which I really consider to be Bitcoin trash. I don't want you to be uh, this guy checking out Bitcoin Cash when he should be, uh, he or she should be staying faithful to Bitcoin. So this sort of jumps to my conclusion. If you want to know where I think Bitcoin Cash is going, I think it's going to zero. It's not worth paying any attention to. But let me give you some hard evidence behind this so you can sort of know my thinking and then you can decide for yourself. I own a lot of Bitcoin. None, not, nothing in here should be construed as investment advice or an investment recommendation. You've got to do your research, make your own decision. And this is especially important because these markets are extremely volatile. And if you don't really understand and believe in what you hold, you're very likely to get uh, wiggled out by the volatility. So the original, uh, the original Bitcoin was BTC, which is Bitcoin. In, on uh, August 1st of 2017, Bitcoin Cash forked away from the main line. And then a little bit later, approximately a little more than a year later, BSV forked off of Bitcoin Cash. I'm going to tell you what forking means in a minute, but I just wanted to give you this idea. Bitcoin itself is the original one that was created in 2009 by uh, the person under the pseudonym of Satoshi Nakamoto. And it's really the great granddaddy. It's, it's the original one. So how do you create a fork? Well, I'm going to show you how you can create your own fork today. I'm not super technical when it comes to this, but I'm going to show you my general understanding. You just go to, uh, you can go to GitHub. You can go to this Bitcoin page. This is the page that has the software code for Bitcoin Core. Now, Bitcoin is open source. You can take a look at the software. And if you want to clone it, in other words, make a copy and create your own uh, your own fork of Bitcoin, you can basically just click clone right here. Now, there's no reason to do this, obviously. And I'm going to give you a, an analogy that will help you understand this. Here is a website that enables you to make your own Facebook for free within just one hour. As it says, four easy steps. You can create something that looks just like Facebook. Uh, I presume it has the same functionality as Facebook, but what is it missing? Why are you not going to be Mark Zuckerberg if you do this? Well, Facebook already exists. It has all the uh, all the family members, all the friends, all the college roommates. Uh, everyone's on there, and so it has what's called a network effect, and uh, this is why it's often known as social networking or the network. But there, it's impossible to create your own Facebook to run against Facebook now. You might be able to create your own social media, your own TikTok, your own Twitter or something like that, uh, but nothing like Facebook. And you also, you, you right now, you cannot create your own Twitter and compete against Twitter because everyone obviously is already on Twitter. So this is, this is the thing that really protects Bitcoin and protects its, protects its fixed supply. So when I tell people in my videos on YouTube that it has, tw they're just 21 million Bitcoin, everyone is, uh, the, the, uh, the rebuttal to this is always, well, that's true, but anyone can create their own coin. Now this is true, you can make your own coin, but it doesn't mean it's gonna have any value. It doesn't mean you're gonna be able to get people to work to actually use it. And I think Bitcoin Cash is a very good uh, cautionary tale for this reason. Uh, it was it was a split as we saw. It was a Bitcoin hard fork, and as such, prior to August of 2017, it shares a history with Bitcoin, much in the same way that uh, we might say the Lutheran Church shares a common history with the Catholic Church, uh, pre 1517 or whatever, however you want to date it, etc. In fact, this looks a little bit like uh, the history of of Christian churches. Not to analogize. Uh, cryptocurrencies and religion, but there are some uh, there are some similarities. So, what happened with Bitcoin Cash? Well, if we take a look at it today, we can see that it only has a market cap of 4.3 billion. This is all the coins that exist times the price. This is the value of all the Bitcoin Cash in the world. BSV, which as we said is a fork of Bitcoin Cash has a market cap that's even smaller, 3.2 billion, whereas the, the great granddaddy in the space, 
Bitcoin has a market cap of 174 billion. Now, if we look at volume as well, the volume of Bitcoin over the last 24 hours, approximately $23 billion uh, worth of it traded versus 1.5 billion and 1 billion of Bitcoin Cash and Bit Bitcoin SV. Now, these numbers are important. If you or I want to buy one of these, we're not going to have a problem. But if you're a big institutional investor, you have hundreds of millions of dollars, tens of millions, hundreds of millions, even billions of dollars to invest. You're going to be driven to the security with the largest market cap as well as the largest trading volume. If you try to trade one of these really small coins like XRP or, or, or Litecoin, you ha there's much less daily trading liquidity. It's much more expensive to get in and to get out. There's also the brand associated with it. If you're an institutional trader, if you work for a hedge fund and you have your own capital you're running within the fund, if you tell your boss that you bought Bitcoin, that's one thing. Maybe it will turn out to be a good investment. I think it will. Maybe it will turn out to be a bad investment. But if you tell your boss that you bought BSV or something further down this list, if you bought something, heaven forbid, Stellar or Monero or Tron or one of these things that are just tiny or even further down the list, there is not as much, uh, there's much, not as much forgiveness if something goes wrong. Apart from the fact that just getting in and out of the positions, there's gonna be a lot more slippage. Big investors want big market caps and they want big trading volume. Now let's look at some other characteristics of Bitcoin versus Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin BSV. If we look at all the nodes of Bitcoin, these are all the full nodes running around the world. You can see they're scattered all around um, everywhere in the globe. They're really clustered in North America, Europe, Asia as well, but they're everywhere. And this is why when people tell me that the US government's gonna shut down Bitcoin, I have to ask them how exactly they're gonna go into Russia and shut down those nodes or go into South Africa and shut down those nodes or go into China and shut down the nodes. These nodes, uh, this is a completely decentralized new currency, 10,539 nodes that are scattered all around the world. Now let's compare that 10,500 number with Bitcoin Cash. I, I, I tried a couple different sites, got different, uh, different numbers for the nodes, but we'll compare a couple of them. This one for Bitcoin Cash says there are 1,338 nodes for Bitcoin Cash. Again, contrast that with the 10,500 for the real Bitcoin. This website says that Bitcoin Cash nodes, they're 1,389. So we can say that roughly, we can be pretty certain that they're 1,300 to 1,400 public nodes, which is just a small fraction of the number of nodes that are being, basically 10% uh, of the number of nodes that are being run by Bitcoin. Now, the more nodes you have, the more secure it is, the more decentralized it is, the more difficult it is to shut down. Now, if Bitcoin Cash has somewhere between 1,300 and 1,400 nodes, BSV, uh, Bitcoin Satoshi's vision, and it's actually not Satoshi's vision, uh, has even fewer. There are only 334 public nodes. According to this website, according to this website, there are 327, so somewhere around there in the 300s. Uh, just a tiny fraction of the number of Bitcoin Cash nodes and the number of Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin uh, f full nodes. Again, we're talking about much smaller market cap, uh, a smaller network, a smaller trading volume, smaller institutional interest as well. Now let's look at hash power. This is the hash rate for Bitcoin Cash. And uh, I, I hope I made it clear that the different um, symbols, Bitcoin is BTC, Bitcoin Cash is BCH, and Bitcoin Satoshi's vision is BSV. Uh, but if we look at the, the hash rate, which is basically the computing power that's securing the network, uh, for Bitcoin Cash, it's currently about 2.5, um, I think this is, I, I want to say quintillion hash hashes per second. So 2.5 uh, uh, EHS for Bitcoin Cash. Now let's compare that to Bitcoin. Bitcoin has, call it 110 uh, quintillion hash per second. I'll link this so you can see the, the nomenclature basically of these different hash rate denominations. Uh, yes, uh, one EH per second. I'm not sure what EH stands for, but it's basically one quintillion hash rates per second. And if you're a Bitcoin cash guy and you're making fun of me because I don't know this technical stuff, uh, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. You are in the, uh, you are in the losing uh, currency, unfortunately. So I could understand uh, if you're bitter. I'm not a technical person, but I do understand markets and I do understand where institutional 
uh, money is going to come. When you have a much higher hash rate, the network is much more secure as well. And so if you're allocating institutional money or you want to really store your wealth in Bitcoin, you're much more comfortable than doing it in Bitcoin Cash, which because of the lower hash rate and the lower number of nodes and lower number of miners is much more prone to uh, different kinds of attacks. Now let's look at the performance of Bitcoin versus Bitcoin Cash. These are the kind of the overall numbers uh, since 2015. You can see Bitcoin Cash up something like 2,400 uh, percentage, and um, Bitcoin, uh, I'm sorry, Bitcoin up something like 2,400 percentage points. But I think we need to actually normalize this because Bit as we saw Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash did not really begin until August of 2017. So if we slide this down, and we'll get the approximate, uh, line them up, the approximate starting rate, we can see that initially Bitcoin Cash, there was a lot of interest right out of the gates. It really outperformed uh, Bitcoin for a while, but it's been underperforming Bitcoin really since I think the crossover happened, uh, call it the middle of 2018. And now you can see that Bitcoin Cash is actually below, uh, below the zero mark, whereas uh, Bitcoin itself is up uh, approximately 244% from this starting point. So this shows you the relative performance. I could add BSV in here. In fact, I will add it to show you how to do it. You just add a signal, add, add a symbol here, type in BSV USD, and you can click on usually the first one that comes up. And that doesn't really, doesn't really change things. If we look at uh, from the starting point, we can see that both Bit BSV and Bitcoin Cash have really underperformed Bitcoin. This is because people have realized that there's no way to fork Bitcoin. You can go to GitHub and do a clone here, but it's not gonna, it's not gonna help you uh, in any way. Further, another network effect we might take a look at is the number of developers working on Bitcoin versus on Bitcoin Cash. The number of Bitcoin developers working on BSV is just tiny. I couldn't even find numbers for it. But basically Bitcoin Cash has been losing developers over time. And so you've often heard me say in previous videos that Bitcoin Cash is a failed project. It's a failed crypto project. And this is what I mean by it. I mean that it's underperformed, it's lost developers, it can't compete in terms of market cap, daily liquidity, number of nodes, hash power, etc. So as a result, we have sort of a natural winner here, which makes it very easy if you're bullish on crypto to be bullish on Bitcoin. This is the one that I think is going to be the winner. And the reason for that is when institutional money comes in, and institutional money is beginning to come in, we've had uh, a lot of uh, hedge funds and institutional investors buying the, uh, the Grayscale, uh, uh, the GBTC, which is a way of investing in Bitcoin. We also saw earlier in the May that Paul Tudor Jones, a great macro tra trader and investor who's famous for making money when the stock market crashed in 1987, he's been buying Bitcoin as a hedge against inflation. And how has he been buying it? Well, he's been using the futures. Now, if you want to trade Bitcoin cash futures, you can't because they don't exist. Whereas Bitcoin futures, we actually have two exchanges. You can trade them on the CME. You can trade them on the backed. The backed are physically settled. I believe the, uh, the Bitcoin futures on the CME group are cash settled. But if you're an institutional investor, you don't want to have to deal with custody. Where do you store these Bitcoin? There are a lot of uh, things that make that more difficult and risky. And this is something you have to figure out on your own when you are uh, buying Bitcoin. I buy my Bitcoin on Coinbase. I withdraw it and hold it on various hardware wallets. I think that's the safest way to do it. But again, you got to do your own research. I do have some other videos on Bitcoin, which you can check out, which might give you uh, might give you ideas. But there are no, uh, this is why when the, the money comes in, the big institutional money comes in in the coming years, it's going to go into Bitcoin. It's not going to go into Bitcoin Cash, simply because these these derivative products, uh, including options, for example, just don't exist in the same way with the same liquidity for Bitcoin Cash. In the case of the futures, they don't exist at all on these regulated exchanges. You can go off exchange and get some uh, some uh, leverage some from some actual crypto exchanges, but not from uh, not from these really official groups that institutional traders trust. So to summarize, Bitcoin is all the network effects. It's got the large market cap. It's got great daily liquidity, which leads to less slippage when you're trading. It's got the best known brand. Even my kids know what Bitcoin is. Highest hash rate, which means that the network is the most secure. And it also has the most full nodes. This is why I like Bitcoin 
much more than Bitcoin Cash. And I think in this case that if you're diversifying into Bitcoin Cash or Bitcoin uh, BSV, it's actually, as they say, diversification rather than diversification. You are throwing money away. Now, maybe you have a technical reason or a philosophical reason having to do with block size that you might prefer one of these other projects. But I would suggest that that's being a little bit too idealistic, that this is how the real world works. It works through network effects, and we don't always get the best product. Facebook maybe is not the best product uh, that it could be, uh, but it is it is what we have for that kind of social networks. Like, same goes for YouTube, same goes for Twitter, etc. That's why I prefer Bitcoin over Bitcoin Cash any day. And I do own Bitcoin. I don't own any Bitcoin Cash, and uh, I never will. Hope you guys found this helpful. If you did, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. And uh, let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for listening, and I'll see you in the next video.